so I should first thank everybody who is responsible for my research and my uh, visit here. So first to, to Evan Schrodinger Institute and the uh, organizing committee, and especially to Professor Strobel for inviting me. Uh, the research in this, uh, 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 the, the very topic uh, of the talk at the end, uh, uh, was mainly done in 2019 when I was at, uh, at IHES. Uh, it's not finished work, it's work in progress, but I haven't done anything since then. I should return to the, the subject. Uh, at that time, I was also supported by University of Hades Kralove, and uh, this visit and a uh, number of uh, other things were uh, supported by Institute Roger Boskovic and the uh, Croatian, um, uh, Croatian Science Fun Foundation, whose logo is here. Uh, here's just the abstract, that's just for me, we don't care about the abstract. So, um, uh, the, uh, so the, the talk will have two parts. Uh, at the beginning, I will, uh, I will talk about known things, because most of people here didn't work even with Hopf algebras, not Hopf algebras, which are much, much more uh, difficult uh, uh, subject. Uh, and, uh, and I will be many times switching gears just to give various kinds of background. So if you don't like one part of motivation, there is another which maybe you will like and so on. And then uh, toward the end, I will go to this new version of Hopf algebraids, which are non-associative. Hopf algebraids themselves are not non-associative, but their base is non-associative, whatever that means. Uh, so what would we like to do? Uh, uh, we would like to have a, a systematic framework for deformations, both non-commutative and non-associative, uh, in the sense that you don't deform just one thing. You deform some algebra, you, you don't care. If you want to, to do physics, you want to, to have all kinds of geometrical structures, you want to have observables, you want to have all kinds of objects in the same time. And uh, it appears that these various twists, which are related to Hopf algebras and so on, that they give quite systematic ones. I mean, uh, 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 they can be systematically then used to modules, to various categories which are associated and so on. Uh, so uh, one can deform various things. Uh, I will be basically concerned with the uh, kind of background with configuration space or phase space or extended phase space, where by extended I mean that you add generators or some symmetries in addition to the kind of phase space, both classical, quantum, whatever. And uh, uh, the reasons for the formation sometimes come from just I want to quantize. Sometimes there are various kinds of fluxes, non-geometric fluxes and so on. Sometimes there is a fundamental non-commutativity and you simply have a model. And uh, the formation is typically uh, controlled by some cohomological datum that you've seen in the morning today. And uh, so, so, so I'll just start with what everybody knows, just the usual deformation quantization. Uh, or, um, or I, uh, uh, and uh, so, so in that, uh, just, just to compare things, not, not to teach you, but just to compare. So if, uh, if you have a usual multiplication say, of, of functions, and then the deformation quantization is gi given by, by a bidifferential operator, which is a series in formal, from a variable and these this terms, the, 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 they have both uh, momenta and coordinates. Uh, and uh, um, uh, so, so this is in, in bigger algebra than this f and g, whose deformed product I want, they are just in coordinate algebra. And this f involves more. That's one point. It's, it's a trivial point, but it will be very important for me why I work with Hopf algebraids. Uh, uh, it will be important for me that this f belongs to a bigger algebra than the algebra which I deform. Okay, that will be important for me later. No, because you have partial derivatives. And the f and g don't, have partial, don't involve partial derivatives involve just uh, coordinates. 
Okay, uh, so... Uh, Uh, well, uh, uh, if you consider the coordinate algebra, the, the, the algebra on the configuration space, okay? So you want to deform that algebra, that algebra. But that algebra doesn't have partial derivatives. But the, the operator which acts, it has partial derivatives. It is, it is in the bigger algebra. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, uh, this is in sharp contrast to the Dreamfeld approach. You know, Dreamfeld takes takes a, 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 a Hopf algebra, and, the, the, and he takes similar object twist, which is in tensor product of H with H. So when he twists the coproduct on this Hopf algebra uh, by, by this formula, then he uses generators in the same algebra as in this coalgebra in which he twists. Later, of course, he can have spaces with its symmetry. He can have modular algebras over that. And then this f, f to minus one is in the H tensor H. However, this f and g are in different algebra. So it's again, it's a little, it can be different, but, uh, but it's quite important that with Hopf algebra, I don't have a bigger algebra in, in which it's a closed cycle, but it's equally big. Uh, okay. So uh, sometimes uh, you, uh, why, why you need uh, uh, this, this thing needs, needs uh, Dreamfeld uh, uh, co-cycle condition. If, if, you, if you drop it, you can still have a theory with quasi-hope algebras mentioned this morning uh, in connection to uh, um, Dreamfeld's work in 1990 uh, about uh, uh, rational conformal field theory. Um, uh, okay, so uh, uh, now next thing. Um, you see uh, action group width, they unify symmetry operators and the space on which acts. That's very similarly like Heisenberg algebra. It has, all, it has infinitesimal generators of the translations, but it has also, also the coordinate algebra. So, so you, you, you both have algebra of which you describe the space, but you also have some symmetries there. And action group which have a similar idea. Now, if you want to do it in non-commutative geometry, analog of action group widths, will be scalar extension of Hopf algebraids. That's in the first paper when Hopf algebraids were introduced by, by Lou, uh, was exactly for that reason, although another reason was for her, she wanted to quantize Poisson group widths important in geometry. Uh, Hopf algebras can also, uh, uh, are in, uh, they can e explain group-like symmetries, like groups. Say you take uh, dual over group, uh, I mean the, uh, the, uh, the functions on the group, you can take the uh, group algebra, but you can also consider things like uh, Lie algebras, enveloping algebras, or also uh, Hopf algebras. <laughs> Um, uh, now I want to unify this, these two things. So you don't want only groupoid, but you want also infinitesimal ones to put inside. Uh, and one more motivation is if you take Heisenberg algebra, Heisenberg algebra is not a Hopf algebra. Uh, that's well known. Uh, although the idea is similar, like action groupoid. You see, as I said, you have space uh, coordinate algebra, but you also have translation generators. Uh, so quantum action group which whatever it, it be, should be a common generalization. But there are many formalisms. Hopf algebraids are just one formalism. There are, there are some others. I won't even touch on this, uh, talk about it. Um, uh, and I would like to do non-associated non deformations. I will, I will tell you why and so on. Uh, though not that much about why, more about how. Uh, 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 oh, oh, okay, so, so let's, let's, let's take this approach via Hopf algebraids. So you see in Hopf algebras, I have an algebra and I have a co-multiplication. That means that you can, that the category of modules is monoidal. You want this in, in field theory, you want to have, the, that you have representations, that representations of the symmetry algebra that they, uh, they have tensor product. Uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is needed, uh, like addition of momenta and similar, similar things. Now in, in Hopf algebra, is the, the co-product will be relative over something. And this something is again algebra. And 
potentially is non-commutative, and today it will be even non-associative. Uh, and uh, now th this makes a problem, because if, if A is commutative and age is non-commutative, no problem. That's well known from 1980s, that can be easily done. You just do like, you just take the definition of a group with, and you just do like, diagrammatically you do like all the axioms, and you have the axioms of Hopf algebra over commutative base. Similarly, like you get Hopf algebra from definition of a group. Uh, like a co-group object. And, uh, yes, I will need that. I will need that. I will need that H will be bimodule over A, and even in a specific way, yes. So, but, but first thing to notice if somebody doesn't go into the details is that I will have that H will go into something was not just H tensor H, but it's relative. And that makes a lot of problems. One of the things is that this thing is not an algebra. And because it's not an algebra, what does it mean that this is compatible with multiplication? That is multiplicative if this is not an algebra. This was a big problem, and Lou solved it. Uh, Takeuchi solved it in a different way before that. It is less known, known to specialists. So, so l let's go to example which is uh, uh, important uh, uh, to us, which is over commutative base when we don't have these problems. So take just, uh, just functions and take differential, differential operators over the same manifold. manifold. And then uh, you can, of course, multiply differential operators by functions from left and right, no problem. Uh, like functions considered multiplication with the function. And, uh, uh, and, and then you define uh, on vector fields, as generators here, generators are vector fields and functions. On functions, it's just function times one, and on uh, vector fields is one tensor x plus x tensor one, because vector fields act as derivation, so it has to be a Leibniz rule. This is a Leibniz rule. And, and then this completes to, to, these data are part of the structure of a, of a, of a, of a bi-algebraid. Now this bi-algebraid versus Hopf algebraid, that's just the difference in, in antipode. I won't talk about this today, it's not very important. Here you need certain connection of certain type, very specific connection on uh, existence of certain, very specific to be a Hopf algebraid in this example. Uh, no, this will be just a subclass. I mean, such, such things give rise to this, but this associative bi-algebraids, uh, there are some examples which come from Lie algebraids, like universal enveloping algebra of a Lie algebraid uh, uh, will, uh, will, be, uh, will, will be giving an example, but this is just coincidence that it's the same work. It's in different sense, bi-algebraid. This is associative bi-algebraid. Uh, so it's in a different sense. Well, you see, uh, by uh, like uh, 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 Hopf algebra is to group the same as Hopf algebraid is to groupoid. So it's it's like, uh, uh, and all examples show that uh, it's some sort of a horizontal horizontal categorification. It is a proper horizontal categorification of a Hopf algebra. So functions on the group with form a uh, commutative Hopf algebraid. Okay? Okay. Thank you for your question. Uh, so modules over any bi-algebra and even over a bi-algebraid. Now here I left right this, don't, don't care about that, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, form a monoidal category that, that I said. Uh, you act on, uh, on tensor products that you act uh, that you take the co-product first and then you act in first leg by first action and second leg by second action. Now, if you forget, if you forget that this is over, over this, yeah. This is action, any action. So, so, so if you have action on, uh, like this M's element in module in representation M, N is in N. Now the tensor product is again representation this way, that you take the co-product of, of the thing which acts, 
and then this will be in tensor product. So the first leg acts on M with first action and second with second action. That's the usual trick, why hope algebras are introduced in the world and why algebraids, B algebraids are introduced in the world. Now, if you forget the action, these are still, th uh, these are still modules over this small part. You see, I have this Heisenberg algebra and inside you have just coordinate algebra. So coordinate algebra is a part of it. You have like a analog of a unit map here, like, uh, like source and target map for group is here are dual maps which are called also source and target in in the, in the in this world sorry so this will be also the module over over this base algebra a so when you consider the base algebra then uh, uh, and forget this additional action then then this here will keep the tensor product. It will be what's, what's called strong monoidal, uh, monoidal functor. Tensor product goes to tensor product. You just forget part of the structure. That's okay. But, and Slachan, he had a very nice conceptual redefinition. He had the theorem which gives a redefinition of, of, of a bialgebraid. What is bialgebraid? Bialgebraid is simply what you have to put an algebra so that the modules over it will be uh, will be uh, will uh, will be a monoidal category, and this monoidal category, when you forget, with after forgetful functor to the the base, uh, uh, I I mean projection to modules over the base algebra. So you forget part of generators. You forget those generators which are not in the base algebra. Base algebra is smaller. Bayes algebra is A, sorry, Bayes algebra is A, and the total algebra is H. So bi algebra is two things, is, is the big, like, like uh, in groupoid you have arrows and objects. So objects is like A, and arrows, functions on arrows is H. So you can forget because every object gives, gives trivial arrows, like identity arrows. So if you forget this, this is strong monoidal functor. And all the structures to lift, uh, to lift the monoidal structure up, up there in a strict way is exactly what's needed for, for bialgebraid. That's, that's, that's completely conceptual. So this is unique. You can't have 10 definitions which have this property, just one. Of course, you can define several, many axiomatics and every axiomatics will be difficult, complicated for all us, it's complicated, but this is, says in one sentence what a bialgebraid is additional structure on an algebra so that the monoidal category over the base lifts upstairs. That's it. That's large and it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic uh, uh, result. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, A by, by uh, no, downstairs I have A by modules. Downstairs I have A by modules. Yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, where, the, where examples come from, uh, things like similar to Heisenberg algebra, every deformation quantization twist the coproduct of algebra of algebra of differential operators or function algebra so that you have a new bialgebraid with the same total algebra but but with the twisted base algebra base algebra is what has a star product so it twists the base algebra and total algebra is the same but it has more it has more structure of, of uh, so uh, to say uh, if you if you twist the co the, the coordinates and uh, there is always a realization which uses also some partial derivatives. So it is not anymore just coordinates, it's also partial derivatives when you do, you need deformation quantization, you have this big series there. However, the, the, the total algebra is the same, but uh, the, uh, the bialgebraic structure tells you how this is split in the coordinate part and, and something else. So it is kind of a, a choice, what is really geometry within this bigger algebra, but bigger algebra doesn't really change. Okay, in, uh, by, by, uh, by, by a twist. Then as I say, from Lie algebraids, you can, you can get 
uh, extended phase spaces for hop algebras. There is a construction with closed scalar extension. I won't go into details. Uh, uh, weak Hopf algebras. Weak Hopf algebras appear in uh, w when people in axiomatic quantum field theory consider inclusions of subfactors. And that two inclusions of subfactors give rise to weak Hopf algebra, and every weak Hopf algebra give a bialgebraic. Uh, then gauge transformations for non commutative fiber bundle whose structure Hopf algebra uh, is Hopf algebra. I studied. By, 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 by week, this is uh, first introduced uh, in some sense by Mack and Schomerus in 1992 and later uh, more precisely by... The, 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 the co-algebra structure doesn't respect units correctly and the algebra structure doesn't respect the co-units correctly, but in a, in a weaker way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, there will be, there will be, there will be. Yeah, it will come later. I want to motivate. Yeah. My purpose is to go to n over non-associative base. That's, that's my, my goal. So, so I, I really want to motivate so that at the end I don't need to say that much. Okay. And then, uh, so, so the gauge transformations, they, 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 they form a group with the gauge group with, and there is a version for non-commutative case. And this is so-called Erasmus Schallenberg biogebroid. The most recent work is by, by Landi and his, uh, his PhD student. Uh, uh, and then um, there, are, there are other works, for example, for dynamical young Baxter equation can be uh, formalized uh, in this language, uh, et, et cetera. Did I jump over something here? Kind of, I missed. Okay, so what is, what is, uh, what is a bialgebroid most strictly? So we have, um, here it says A tensor A over ring. So it just means that you have, that H, you have with morph uh, that you have two morphisms from A to H. One, one is, one is uh, homomorphism from A to H, and another is anti-homomorphism, that means A op, uh, from A to H. So that means there are two ways that you put coordinate algebra within this bigger phase space algebra. And uh, uh, they commute, their images commute. This is like, in one example, it's like left and right vector fields on a, uh, right, and right invariant vector fields on a Lie group commute. That we've Uh, yeah, th th this is condition that, that, that when you multiply from the left with alpha or something and beta or something from the same side, that we will give a bimodule, yes, bimodule structure. Yes, a ring in the category of, yeah, yeah. And, and they, have, they have some specific yoga, yeah, uh, precisely, precisely. Uh, and, uh, um, and then you have a co-algebra in the category of, again of A bimodules. And they satisfy some compatibilities. Mu is a multiplication on H, on H. Now, uh, if it's Hopf algebra, you have co-algebra and algebra, and uh, multiplication is co-algebra map and co-multiplication is algebra map. That's the way you usually do. Here's a little problem, because A tensor A up is at, at one place you have A tensor A up, and another you have A. Just A by modules or A tensor A opposite modules, by modules. It's not the same, uh, the, the same tensor category. So because of that, it's a little complicated. So, uh, what? If you consider this important, yes. Uh, yes, yes, but these are just compatibility conditions which are uh, a little bit, Ah, previous, yes, previous, yes, previous is very important, yes. So, so we have two algebras, A, which is a base, you have H, which is on the top, and you have two maps, alpha and beta. So that you have, uh, 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 and, uh, and, and, then, and then you have this, uh, uh, yes, from bottom to, uh, uh, from bottom to top, yes. Epsilon goes down. Epsilon goes from top to bottom for unit. Uh, 
Yes, 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 yes. In the case of group weights, or functions on the group weights. Yes. Yeah, uh, unital algebras, yes, algebras are unital. I didn't put as a special yeah, map. Yeah. yeah. It is unital, no, I, I, I didn't write it here. And, and then there are compatibility conditions. Uh, so one of them is that bimodule is in a specific way by multiplying from the left arrow. Or if you want to multiply by A from the left, you, you simply A make an element of algebra H, and then you just multiply it. How you make it? By alpha. If you want it from the right, you make it from, you also multiply it by this, from the same side, but with beta, which is anti-homomorphism, and they commute, so it's like acting on the other side. Then uh, there is an action, like you see the differential operators act just on, on the coordinate algebra. There is a specific action. This is very often folk-like action in, in uh, 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 F is in A and H is in H. Uh, there's some summation, I mean, general element I, I could have put, uh, yeah. It's just some summation, some general element is linear combination. Linear combination, just a general element. Uh, I act uh, by this way, and this is an action from H tensor A to A. And uh, uh, so it's not trivial that this has to be action. And second is, you see, because this tensor product is not an algebra, I can't multiply it with delta H, which is also in that, in a priori. That means it satisfies the action axioms, the associativity for action axioms, the unitality of, ac of, uh, of action. Uh, no, H is the total algebra of my algebraoid. And I require that map given by epsilon. Epsilon is not a homomorphism. Epsilon is just bimodule map. And uh, it's a co-unit. And that this co-unit uh, uh, co produces an action. This is non-trivial statement. And also certain multiplicativity that you can multiply elements of the form uh, which are in the image of delta, you can multiply by, by anything which, where you already quotient it out. Because you quotient it out by right ideal, it's not necessarily satisfied. This is really condition. This is really condition. There is a different way to talk about it via some, some structure which is called uh, Takeuchi product, namely within this here, this condition C3 is the same as that, that certain subspace of that, which is a priori an algebra, the delta H is in this subset, so it can be multiplied. So this is, this is quite ingenious construction of Takeuchi. Uh, but it's the same as the other thing. And if you look at this ideal, the kernel of projection, then it's generated by elements of this form, okay? Uh, so, so now in this setup, once you have a bialgebraoid, say I start, start with the trivial one, I have just the differential operators over the commutative one, over, over the coordinate algebra. And then I want to twist it. So you again put the co-cycle condition like in Drinfeld's work. However, here is over A, you have more freedom. And uh, this F is in the bigger algebra in H tensor H. And if this is satisfied, uh, then, uh, and if F is invertible, then you can do the whole yoga of, uh, of things. Namely, there is a theorem at the very beginning when this was devised, that if you have a bialgebraoid and F satisfies this, this criteria, the F, F is element in H tensor H, which is uh, uh, which satisfies the two cycle condition is analog of Drinfeld twist in bialgebraoid setup. So Drinfeld twist is uh, is uh, I had it in several slides before is just uh, an element 
in H tensor H, where H is a Hopf algebra. We satisfy such a condition, every, all tensor products are over the ground field, uh, and which can be helped that you can take this Hopf algebra and change the coproduct on it to a twisted one. And then anything what has this Hopf algebra as a symmetry will have changed product on it. So all spaces which have covariance for this Hopf algebra will have a twisted, twi uh, this F will, will, will have to twist there to deform their, uh, their product. And this co-cycle condition is the condition that all these products will become associative or that the co-product of the Hopf algebra will be co-associated. So the same thing is done by Zhu, except F versus F to minus one. I have no time now to explain why. Uh, 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 it's convention with the reason. Uh, so, so, so Ping Zhu proved the following theorem, that, that if you start with bialgebroid, you keep the same product on bialgebroid. You just change the co-product to the, the new one which is given by this formula. And you define a new Uh, I worked with, in Slachenia definition, I worked with left mo modules, and the alpha and beta for bimodule structure were multiplying from the left. If they would be from the right, I would have to change some. Yeah. Some things have to be opposite. It's not possible to say in one sentence. It's, I, I work all the time with the left one. And uh, um, so, um, uh, the, the base will get a new product which will be deformed by this formula, which is similar like when you have deformation quantization. You have again F, but this F is in a bigger algebra. H is a bigger algebra. A is a smaller. A is smaller. And, and, and then you will have for this new A, A the same A word but with new, new, new star product, you will have new source and target map given by these formulas and the new co-product on the total algebra. Uh, so F, uh, F I write as some sum F1 tensor F2 with some indices skipped. So it is like a Smidler -like, like notation. So F1 I tensor F2 I summation over I. That is how element in the tensor product looks like. So because you see sometimes uh, you have to change the, the order so it's convenient to uh, do it this way. And this will give a new, a new co-associative, co-unital, et cetera, a new, new bialgebroid. And moreover, if you take A star is the same A, the same, the same ba base, but with the new star product, which is given by this formula. Okay. And uh, F to minus one also satisfies the co-cycle condition and some People like to work with F to minus one. Uh, and, and then very important that every deformation quantization, associative deformation quantization, provides a twist. So you take that F uh, twist of, of which? Of, of just the, the original, the one, the differential operators over the C infinity of M, but you get something over non-associative, non-commutative base now after, after twisting. And uh, the, the star product on A will be exactly the one uh, coming from that. All the structure is there. So this is quite remarkable. Although it's easy theorem, once you have this area, it's, it's easy theorem, uh, not much used, not much used, but uh, morally it's, it's important uh, uh, to tell you in which direction to go further. Uh, uh, now, uh, very many examples are of the kind that you have you see, when you have a Hopf algebra and X on something, it's usually what we call module algebra. And many people in the audience worked on such things. Here, if it's a little bit more than that, yet a Dreamfeld module algebra. And then if you do the tensor product with certain semi-direct multiplication given by this formula, then the total algebra will over this A part will be uh, uh, Hopf algebraic. And examples like 
like Lie algebra type non-commutative spaces, etc. They all give uh, they give rise to this like examples with uh, Snyder space, uh, the associative version, and etc. Many uh, many examples uh, give rise to this, and these are really uh, these are analogs of action groupets. Analog of action groupets is this construction. Of course, here is just a part of this construction. For example, in, the, in one of the original papers on this construction, there is one little mistake, and my student is just, my ex-student is just writing a 40 pages paper to, to, to fix some, some things. So this construction has uh, lots of uh, interesting things. Okay, so, so just to say that the difference between Hof algebraid and Bayer algebraid is some, some additional map, which is like a coin inverse, like in Hof algebras. I have some new results on this. I don't want now to talk about them, although they are on the slides. Um, uh, okay, let's go to non-associative version. We have 20 minutes left, so I think it will be. So, so, so I won't talk much about motivation for uh, non-associativity. I will just uh, uh, refer to authorities. Uh, so there are various kinds of non-associativity considered in physics. You, you know them in quantum field theory, origin, in original works of von Neumann and Bigner, uh, uh, who, who uh, were studying quantum mechanics and quantum field theory in early days. They, they, the general framework was uh, were Jordan algebras, and Jordan algebras are, uh, are non-associative. And, and then um, in recent, there are recent works uh, that uh, uh, where people wanted to uh, quantize Poisson structures and uh, around there were non-geometric fluxes or some other uh, uh, objects and they succeeded uh, to construct some non-trivial um, uh, frameworks. In some of these frameworks, quasi-Hopf algebras were used. Quasi-Hopf algebra means that you twist it with something what does not satisfy the Dreamfeld core cycle condition. So you're losing associativity. However, you are not going still in, into, 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 into Hopf algebras. You are doing still with Hopf algebras. And many people were bugging me like for four or five years, let's do Hopf algebraic version of quasi Hopf algebras, and I didn't know how to do it. And this, the, 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 the formulas in which I uh, will give in the next 20 minutes will simply give a, a kind of a trivial path how to say what, what the analogs uh, are for. And uh, so, so here I'm listing some works by and some people in, in the audience uh, uh, which are related to this group. And there are also some uh, 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 more formal work on just on star products without uh, like some models which are simply given by some algebras and so on. Like a Snyder model has a version which is which gives associative star product, and there is a version which gives non-associative star pro product. So, so the, uh, the non-associative versions were, were also considered. So let's, let's now see, uh, and, and one more thing, why, why I want Hopf algebraids even when, when they are not completely necessary. You see, many people like to put uh, the, 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 the analog of Dreamfeld twist in the enveloping algebra of vector fields. And they're considering this is like observables. Here I have uh, partial derivatives, and I have, uh, and I, but it's not the same as differential differential operators because the ideal by which you um, uh, divide is not the same. For example, this relation is true relation in Weyl algebra in differential operators, but it's not true in the universal open vector fields because to get this relation you have to commute x and partial. You cannot just just vector fields commuting. In this you commute just vector fields. It's not the same. So here are artificial things, and I want to work with real operator content. content. Okay, this is a small argument, but uh, uh, okay, let's go to the formalism. So, 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 although not yet. Uh, so, what if f? So, uh, I can I can come to non-associative base axiomatically, but I can also start with associative case and twist it. So let's first try to just twist it by something that doesn't satisfy the 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 Joux Dreamfeld, the one the the adaptation to to bialgebroids. So uh, that means if if g is f to minus one, I don't like to write here f to minus one because it's not clear what is to minus one. That's why I put g. And if you take the left side inverted and right side of the co-cyclic condition, 
and you multiply, it's not clear that this makes sense. Let's say that it makes sense, it's some work. Uh, then, then this will be a candidate for a trico cycle. Trico cycle means what this morning Alexei shown this uh, 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 pentagon relation for the uh, in monoidal categories, and this will this will give the data for the pentagon relation. And uh, uh, and now. Um, uh, this thing will, will be a three-core cycle, but in a certain way, I will explain. And we write it again by skipping some indices in this form. And, uh, and we have to make sure what are these tensor products over something twisted. You see, here is here's tensor product over A, and here is over what I was calling here A star. Now I put F because it's a little, a little tricky, but uh, uh, okay. Le, 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 but it's the same thing basically if, if you do properly. Uh, so uh, here we have to be careful because now bracketing matters. So you see, what does it mean pro product over 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 something? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a quotient. Uh, you take thing like that, and then you you can act in the first factor. Uh, uh, well, you have here, say, element M1, tensor A, tensor M2, and then you can A put it to, the, to one side or you put it to the other side. However, you can have a problem that, inside, that you also need this phi, you need to do rebracketing because here I can act with this on this, but I cannot act on this on this, I have first to do rebracketing. But I can also start with this bracketing and do again the recipes, and it's not clear that this quotient will be the same. But it can be checked that, that you have isomorphisms that, uh, that you get this, the, the isomorphic quotient canonically. Uh, so that means that if you take the usual tensor product over the field and quotient by all elements of this kind, where P is this associator thing, or you can buy this where this is the inverse of the associator, then it appears that the quotient spaces are canonically uh, uh, isomorphic. Uh, now, this is just the, the, the one tensor product. If you have two tensor products, now uh, 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 let's go back. You see here, I, I take uh, twice this thing, and here twice with different bracketing. And now you take kernel of that. That's also some ideal. So I will have a plenty of ideals. If I have more and more tensor products, I have lots of ideals. And whenever I multiply with something, I have, and I multiply something which is in one quotient, I can end somewhere where it doesn't make sense. So I have to be sure that, that I'm killing exactly one kind of ideal and end with another kind of ideal. Otherwise, it's totally non-consistent. You have no problem with like that when you work with quasi-Hopf algebras. In quasi-Hopf algebras, you have to care about phi, but you have no ideals to quotient with. And here, maps don't make sense if they don't respect the, the proper ideals. So uh, let's see. Uh, so for example, if you the, 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 on, the, on the picture, one was on the left and one was on the right. I call it two right and two left. And this is a twisted version, and this is the usual version. The usual version doesn't matter whether it's to right or to left. Uh, but twisted version, it matters. And say this, I have these relations. They, they, they help me to make sense of the three core cycle condition and the two core cycle, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the definition of, three of, of the three core cycle and the, uh, the three core cycle condition. Without, without this, it, nothing works. Uh, oh, where am I? Uh, so this is the three core cycle condition. You have to make sense of it. N namely, if I take, so this is symbolically where the brackets are, and star means that every of tensor products is already twisted. Then you can go this way or this way, and you have to get it the same. So if you checked that, ideals are respected, there is no problem. This identity makes sense. If you didn't, if you were just playing, uh, not respecting the ideals, not, nothing else. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of work, but it, it, it works. 
Now, other parts of the story. Uh, so, uh, if the, the hop algebra over associative base, the, the thing which we was clarified in details, thanks to Thomas, thank you very much that uh, we put uh, more, uh, uh, more um, uh, attention to the basic, uh, 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 basic setup. So maybe we can now understand, you see, the IA is the kernel of the projection from the usual tensor product to the relative tensor product over a base. And if you, if you apply the twist to the twisted one, you get the original one. If you apply its inverse to the original one, you get the IF. And the original one is generated as right, right ideal, sorry, here the typo should be alpha of A, by all elements of the form beta of A tensor one minus one tensor alpha of A, where A is element in the base. Now, when you twist it, then you get this kind of generators of the ideal. You see, it's not just beta tensor one minus one tensor alpha, but you also have, and with new beta, new alpha, but you also have this phi. That's because how, uh, how you get to the, to, to the, to the action, etc. in the game, uh, uh, it's simply forced. And when you write down the formula for beta f and alpha f from the theorem of, of, of Ping Zhu, he had the theorem how to twist. And the recipe on the level of beta and alpha is the same. Just with non-associative, uh, with the non-co-cycle non non twist. Now, this is when I started with associative hope algebra. The upper relation is true even if, if I would start uh, with non-associative uh, uh, base. But let's see uh, uh, what, what else is, is, is in the game. Uh, not much, I will not much more tell you, but uh, I will try to explain the general picture now. Uh, okay. So, so let's see. What did we get? And we'll try to think of this as a new framework. So uh, I will take, I will have a non-associative base. It can be obtained by a twist, but it can be simply non-associative, some A star, which is not coming from any F, okay? And this has a multiplication. It's a non-associative in the sense no associative condition a priori. However, when you, uh, when you use this fees, this fee, this, uh, this associator, which is not living in A, it's living in, it's living in H tensor, H tensor, H. Then you can apply it once you work with tensor product over, over the base. But I made what I said, how it's defined in the non-associative uh, uh, case. And then the multiplication induces a component of the unit isomorphism where this will be a unit object in the monoidal category of bimodules over that base itself. And the source and target map, the pullbacks as you said, will be components of the unit, uh, unit coherence in this monoidal category uh, for H uh, uh, H tensor H with uh, A with H. So, so basically, action, you see, the, the, the action comes from the, the requirement that this will be a unit object. So it's something completely, completely natural. And the, the um, uh, 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 a, a, now, this, this, in this category, once you have it, you can, you, you want that this thing is a bimodule over itself. It looks a non-trivial condition. And again, you get analog of this, uh, uh, um, you get the analog of, of the condition that alpha and the images of alpha and beta commute. So everything is expressed now in terms of this monoidal category, uh, but not in ordered way. You see, when I worked in associative case, I first defined a base algebra, category of modules over it, and then I, I'm comfortable with it. And now I define this total algebra as something living over this world. And here, even the base algebra, the base category doesn't make sense without the co-cycle which lives in tensor product over, the, over this total thing. So it has to be defined together. It's not that H is over A, because A 
doesn't make sense that A is associative within some monoidal category before I define the whole, the whole thing. So you simply, this part is non-trivial, which, which I said, uh, uh, these requirements. Once you have these requirements, you have the language. You have the language, what is a bimodule, what is homomorphism. So all those axioms which were listed for associative Hopf algebraic now make sense. I said, you asked me uh, uh, this C2 condition that, that, that something is an action. What does it mean that an action? Again, here, now I have the language to say what is in, what, that this is an action, and I can write C2 condition. So I have axioms for this. Once, once you take just that this is unit object, that, uh, that uh, phi satisfies the, that phi is associated, and so on. Uh, and now, uh, uh, not, not one very, very important thing which, which helps you uh, you see, what we are confused, say, in Snyder space. For Snyder space, we didn't do, we didn't uh, uh, do co full computation, but as I say, some colleagues of mine wanted me to understand the non-associative non, uh, non version of the star product for the Snyder space and to, uh, to understand what is Hopf algebraic there. Uh, Snyder space is certain uh, uh, non-commutative algebra introduced in uh, physics work in 1947 by Snyder which is quite popular nowadays as, as, as a, as a it, it is a certain non commutative algebra which in a way has uh, some angular momenta to get together with coordinates, cons considered as coordinates. I don't have here the relations, maybe, maybe we can do after the lecture. I, I, okay, so anyway, the, the, there is the original version of Snyder, which, and there is kind of expanded version, which is kind of, associative, uh, uh, gives associative star product. A and the, the, and uh, what are we confused? Because you start with something what is non-associative and you want to use this, this, this twist and twists, twists change just the co-product. They don't change the associativity. And then you're confused. What should be associative, what non-associative? In which sense? You don't know how to organize, but here now it's clear. You see the total algebra, even if the base is non-associative, is associative externally, not in monoidal category, externally. Consider just as an algebra, no, no nonsense. The base is non-associative. It's associative only in its own internal category that we don't care. Now, the, this non-associative embeds into associative. That doesn't make sense. Because if you take a subalgebra of associative algebra, it's always associative. You can't have a part which is non-associative. However, embedding is homomorphism not in external sense, but in internal sense. So from internal sense, it is a non-associative, uh, non but because the, this homomorphism property is so much twisted, at the end it embeds that its image in the usual sense is associative. So you have non-associative base, non-associative product, but the entire algebra, and why is this natural for physics? Because look, the, 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 the base geometry, the base geometry can be very twisted. It's kind of artificial. I, I find something what makes sense. A part, 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 of the, mm, part of the world is described by some geometry, and on that I make some some operator algebra of observables, and this operator algebra of observables, I want to be associative. So I want the whole thing. Hopf algebraic has everything. Okay, it's, it's like approximation to some sort of observables, okay? So over there, I really want to have associativity. However, the part which I really call the background can be very, very uh, non-classical, and that's okay. So this says, this formalism exactly gives you this picture. It, is, it was, for me, at the beginning, surprising. Several times I should be this way or that way, and now I see that, this, I mean, this is the only way to make it consistent, and at the end, I think um, it, I find it satisfactory. So this is my message. I, I have some more slides, but they are not important now. I, I think this is the, the conclusion. Uh, yeah, I'm just commenting here that the Slachenius theorem that the forgetful functor is strong modernal is built in. Okay, thank you very much.